Have you ever wanted to have that one unique article of clothing that distinguishes you from everyone else in your school or in your workplace? Did you guys know that extending the life of one certain article of clothing by further nine months would reduce carbon, water, and waste footprints by 20 to 30 percent each? Well, we here at Neo Simplicity offer a solution for you. Our mission is to upcycle thrifted goods, bringing them back to life. So who wants to join us in our revolution of reviving fashion? Before we move on through these slides, we want to talk about a certain keyword that's going to be mentioned consistently throughout our presentation, and that is upcycle. Upcycle is a reuse of discarded materials in such a way to create a product that is in some way better than the original. So you may ask, why would we get into the fashion market, which is so competitive? Well, for right now, we're trying to get into the subcategory of thrift, and it's the best time to get into that <coughs> market because it is growing at 7% annually. Nathan Hatfield, which is a scenic design sophomore, says that the combination of new clothes and old vintage clothes is a great way of reviving fashion and keep it an authentic look on yourself. So a huge problem in the world today is that many people have lots of clothes that they keep in their closets but don't wear just because they don't like the clothing anymore. Now this is actually a big problem that might not be addressed very well because it has been proven that in the year 2015 there was a survey conducted with a thousand women and 43 percent of those women actually admitted to the fact that they had many articles of clothing that they weren't wearing and just didn't like but couldn't find themselves to get rid of. So the solution is our company Neo Simplicity. We are taking donated clothes and bringing them back to life to help express who you are as an individual. And in the year 2018, being that we are the next generation, it has been said that we are very accepting and expressive as one of the newest generations, and our company wants to help express that through articles of clothing. So with that being said, I'm Logan Barkas, the CEO of Neo Simplicity. I'm Teddy Garger, the co-CEO of Neo Simplicity. Hello, my name is Dash Rodriguez, and I'm the CTO of Neo Simplicity. My name is Savannah Barajas, and I'm the online marketing manager. My name is Adobe Palomares, and I'm the CFO and the secretary. Okay, so now we're digging into our business model. So for our customer segment, we talk about the age range that we chose. Now the range is kind of big of 13 to 35, but we actually have broken it down into two brackets of 13 and 25 to 26 and 35. The point of this is that young adults and young teens from 13 to 25 are always out buying new clothes and expressing themselves in different ways. So we need to be able to draw them in with our unique style and help express who they are. The reason we also went with ages 26 to 35 is for the point that yes, there are young adults who have jobs, but there are also young teens who don't have jobs. So parents would be funding most of the products that are being sold. So it has to be something as well that the parents are into and can enjoy to buy for their child or even for themselves based on the sizes we have. For our unique value proposition, um, we are a company that is very unique. And what we do is we get um, clothes from our donated clothing and what we do is we refurbish them and upcycle them to make them trendy, affordable, and fashionable. Okay, so now we want to talk a little bit more about the competition. Currently, we don't have any direct competitors except for Rust and Fray, which they are actually an upcycling business that focus on upcycling bags and luggage. But there are also Instagram solo users who uh, refurbish fashion just for the matter of them posting a picture. So there's not, no business or commercial use of that. So, and there's also no other local company that does the same thing that we do. So for our startup costs, it's only good, we're only going to be using $3,000. And the reason it's only $3,000, even though we're a, a clothing uh, company, is because we're getting our clothing through donations, and we're just going to be using the money for things such as our sewing inventory and our marketing. So with our MVP, we did an event that we hosted called Shop and Chew Events. Now the point of this was to help express who we are as individuals with our company and get our unique brand out there. With this we had tables out of our products that we've been making throughout the year and we also collaborated with two different companies, um, Coltax and Dying Back in Time, to help with providing food to draw in more customers that way they could see what we have but also get something to eat and stick around for a while. This also was kind of a cushion for us to help benefit us if for some reason our products didn't work out. 
we had a little bit of profit from the companies by taking 18% and 20% instead of charging them for being at our event. And we ended up raising $100 for our company, which has gone towards different advertisements that will be talked about later on. So for our key metrics and relationships, what we will be using for social media, we will be using the platforms Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, mainly focusing on Instagram because we have found that most of our target audience is there and in the future presentation we will tell you more about how most of our target audience is there. And for our commercials, in the future we would want to use TV ads such as commercials um, showing our deals and all of our creativity within our business. and. Now we're using Facebook ads and Instagram ads, and we also want to be um, promoting our website through all of our platforms as well. For our channels, we'll be us using social media ads, we'll be showing off our website, and we'll be using word to mouth from events that we will be hosting and the events that we will be attending as well. So for our revenue stream for our first year, we're hoping to make at least $49,000 from selling at least 160 items of clothing each month. And we're going to be getting that money by selling each outfit for $25. So now we're going to go deeper into social media and marketing. So as you guys can see here, are a bunch of screenshots from Instagram. Why did we use Instagram for all of these? Instagram is a great way for startup companies to get valuable statistics that are going to really help us in the long run. As you guys can see, these screenshots were taken from April 23rd to April 29th, which is when we actually promoted two ads. So we were able to get 2,510 impressions, which is very good for a page with only about 200 followers. It has been updated. And we see that 58% of our population is women and 42 men. Our biggest target age, age range comes from 18 to 24. And also, as we're trying to start locally and then expand, most of our population comes from Fresno. So for our partnerships and posts, um, and this post here actually happens to be a thrifting enthusiast. Um, you can see in this photo, this is a thrifting outfit that she had revived and made new herself. And after following her and promoting her photography, we got over 80 plus followers in two and a half weeks. And in the post in the corner, my partner Dasha Rodriguez had made it and he promoted that post for $2.50, which ran for two days and we got um, a total of 152 impressions and we gained 23 followers off that advertisement. So now we'll be discussing a little bit more about our plans for future marketing. We're gonna be using Facebook Pixel, which is a block of code that you can actually insert into your website to track conversions. So for example, we will be adding that onto our Add to Cart button, which will see how much conversions we get from that social media. We're also going to be continuing with our partnerships, such as the one with Jocelyn Marquez, which resulted very, very good in our company. We're going to be attending a lot of local fashion shows and spreading, giving out business cards and using that word of mouth method. Also advertising on other Instagram pages, which is a very cost efficient way of getting more followers without having to spend that money that you would on a regular Instagram ad. So for our total addressable market, we are total addressable, meaning that we're trying to go all the way out to California for um, people who shop online. So that would be 220,000 people for our estimated total number of buyers. For our serviceable addressable market, it would be 9,000 9, people because we're targeting people locally here in Fresno who are from the ages 13 to 35 who shop online. And for our market share percentage, it would be 10% because we are trying to get that good reputation with at least 500 people from the 9,000. So for our revenue, each year is going to be increasing by 5% with the gross profit is the amount of how much we're going to be earning and the SGNA for how much we're going to be spending. For our website, we want to make it very easy for our people to use and especially our customers. So as you can see on top, we have jackets, sweaters, shirts, pants. And there you can click on, when you click on that, you'll see men and women. And when you click on one of those, there will be um, all the clothing we have. And we only have one type, we only have one of each clothing because we're a very unique business. And there you can buy it. And then here you'll see about us and what we do and what we're about. And then also, as you can see right here, is where we'll have our new clothing at when we come out with new clothing. And then for here, you can sign up for our newsletters or you can also tell us 
what you would like for like a shirt, if you would like want to upcycle it or refashion it, you can also do that as well. So our valuation is estimated, we're asking for $10,000 for 10% of our company. And we got those money from the post money valuation and we're gonna be using the funds for things such as our website, our marketing, and for designers and creators to help us design more of our clothing. So for the exit strategy, we have the goal of at three years, if everything's running smoothly like we planned, we would like to sell to an outside buyer in hopes that we can create a store as well as a website within a mall or a small community of stores such as Banana Republic does in different shopping areas. And by doing this, selling to the outside buyer, we would be keeping 30% of the company. So why you should upcycle with us? First of all, we're saving materials from going to landfill, so we see a lot of good, useful clothes just being thrown away. Also, we're trying to minimize the use of natural resources. Did you guys know that it actually takes 2,700 liters of cotton to produce one single t-shirt? So imagine that from a huge store and all that being thrown into a landfill. Also, you know, we're trying to continue with our unique, a uniqueness and everyone's gonna have that one of a kind item and you're doing your part from Mother Nature and doing your part to save our earth. You guys can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using these usernames and thank you so much. So how do you upcycle or make it more fashionable? So with it, what we do is we take like a pair of jeans, for example. Um, we've taken jeans and cut them up into shorts or we've de-stressed them and added holes. That's been a big thing we've noticed that um, a lot of teens are into the holes in the jeans. So we've taken those and de-stressed them and shown the white lines through them to help give that kind of trending style to help kind of bring in our target audience. So who does the labor? It's all of us. We all work really well together with it. Um, Adelby is our seamstress. She really knows really well how to work with that, and we have to give her a lot of credit because she really works hard with the machine. Um, me and Savannah focus more on the cutting and the different ideas and how we're going to be positioning the clothing, but when it comes to bringing everything back together, it's mainly Adelby. And how long does it take you for to do, let's say, a piece of a fashion to, to So for, like, one article of clothing, sometimes it takes 30 minutes to try to make sure that I sew on the lines correctly and not making it like all lopsided. Okay, so if you're trying to do 160 a month and you're taking you about 30 minutes to do a piece of clothing, you're gonna have to have labor help. Mm -hmm. And then that's gonna increase your costs considerably. Yeah, that's gonna, sorry to interrupt you. That's gonna be a part of the investment we're gonna be using, as you guys can see on the slides, uh, for uh, fashion designers and creators, so more people in our labor force to get things out faster. Yeah, I agree, but I think your ten thousand is way too low. I think you're, I think you're undercapitalizing yourself. That'd be my concern. Um, second thing on Instagram, so you know, I saw that. How many likes were you getting? How many shares? And how many comments? <laughs> okay, so on well, the one with Jocelyn Marquez, which was. Uh, just a partnership, we were able to get 78 likes, which is really good for just having 200 followers. And on the post with Elissa, which is a school member here, we actually promoted that for $2.50, and we were able to get 80 likes on that. Do you get any comments or shares? Yeah, people are commenting that they like their styles and everything, and since it is Instagram, you can't share it, but and we, there is no way to track if you uh, actually direct message that post to someone else. So for that, our metrics are just those likes and comments. So in your startup cost, the 10000 is including the pay for all of you? I mean, have you figured out how much you're going to pay yourselves for this business? So um, we haven't really been too worried about um, paying us because this is just something that we enjoy. We don't expect anything out of it. Just we expect it to be something successful. We haven't really taken into consideration of how much we're going to be paying ourselves. We just want to take anything we can get and put that towards the business. That's our main focus. Because ultimately, if you've got commercials, are you going to have a place to rent? And then, you know, of course, utilities to rent that space too, if you ultimately have a, a location? Yeah, as for right now, since we are a startup, we're just focusing on keeping everything online. And as our company progresses, that is something that we can look into in the future. 
but e-commerce is, you know, it's 2018, it's at its highest, highest peak and it's going to keep increasing to the point where, you know, you're not even going to be paying for groceries mm -hmm. at an actual grocery store, you're just going to be ordering them online. So right now our main source of traffic is just online and we're going to try to keep that as long as possible till we see that it is foreseeable to actually run a store and that it will be successful for our business. Gotcha. Um, so, and then this is kind of a question, kind of a, a suggestion. Um, I know I'm a teenage owner and she is on Snapchat quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, she's like, mom, I'm going to be a model. Um, this company is going to give me 20% off if I, if I snap myself wearing their clothes. Mm -hmm. So that might be a way if you can give your buyers Mm -hmm. um, an incentive, and then they'll continue to snap um, and tag you in it. Oops, that's thought, a great, great I way. I thought that was buttons. kind of a, an interesting idea. I mean, mm -hmm. she doesn't really realize she's, she's not getting paid for her modeling. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, you said you get your um, your material stuff from donations. Tell me a little bit more about what do you mean by donations? How 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 are how are you getting that? So, so far through our donations, we've had some of the staff here at Patino who've actually provided many different sizes of clothing for us, and whether it's also donations from ourselves, um, Savannah has a lot of siblings and they've gone through a lot of clothes and she's donated those to us as well to help kind of widen our range with the clothing, but a lot of it's just been through people we know and different staff members. We've um, made different flyers to express to the students here that they can also donate to us because we do have two um, containers full of clothes right now. So we've just been accepting whatever we can. And then what do you, what's your plan to go further than that once that rise up? How do you ramp up your donations? Again, you're looking at 160 to start, you know, you multiply that, you're talking about, and even further than that, I mean, you're talking thousands of pieces of clothing. So how do you ramp up your donations? So something we have been considering lately was that we would talk to different thrift stores such as Goodwill and a couple other ones that are here in town about maybe uh, partnering with them to receive some of the donations that they do a percentage of that because it's very common for people to just donate clothes on the side of the building, they'll leave it or they have a area for them exactly to have for donating. And we would talk to them about either working a partnership with them or taking a percentage of our funding and going towards that with their companies to help with donations towards us. Why don't you just uh, upcycle the clothes and give it to Goodwill? Or with sell it through them. That's something we could do. The only issue with that would be that it's not going to be beneficial for them. They would end up spending money and the, the focus with thrift stores is that they're just taking the donations and selling them for a cheaper price. They're not doing anything to them. And with that, we wouldn't really get our name out as well because it all would be going straight to Goodwills or different thrift stores. Well, I, I look at there. So part of the problem, you got to think about the motivation, particularly as Greg said, you have to get to a larger Segment, uh, you're an LLC, I give you my clothes, I get no tax write-off. I give it to Goodwill, I get a tax write-off. So that's something you've got to figure if you're going to try to find a larger market and get into the motivations of people. But part of it is, okay, someone comes in, I donate it to Goodwill, I got the tax write-off. You come in and say, okay, we're going to upcycle this, and we're going to create a fashion a little booth over here. You can put these in Goodwills all over the country, but these are all upcycles that you do. So Goodwill now gets an, an increase. So let's say the value of the clothes goes from five dollars to ten dollars. You take two fifty. Goodwill gets two fifty out, and now you become the mecca also for people to come in. Just an idea. I'm trying to because otherwise I don't think you're going to get enough people to donate. They'll do it because you're kind of fun and interesting at the beginning, but after after a while, where you need large volume. You had one slide in there and I couldn't figure out, you had 9,000 customers was your, within the Fresno area? Serviceable addressable market, yeah. And how do you calculate that? So I calculated um, the, pers uh, the amount of people that live here in Fresno and then from the age range of 13 to 35 who shop online for clothing. And it's only 9,000? Yeah. Because the age range in Fresno for 13 to 35 I will estimate is over 200,000 people and only 9,000 are online shoppers. 
like that only shop for articles of clothing, not like things such as. Seems like it's low, I think. Because clothing is a very popular thing that they want within that age group. Um, you said the market's 7% growth. Is that a good growth rate to sort of start up to get into? It? Yeah. Particularly a very competitive market. In other words, I think that growth rate is coming from other stores. Can you get in and try to capture some of that? Where do you currently keep your merchandise? So right now, um, we have a class that we work on um, the products and our websites and stuff like that called Business Incubator. Mm -hmm. So we do have a section in the classroom where we have the clothes there stored and then also in a different classroom as well. We have another area for them. Have you looked into, um, I know you want to focus on online, um, but there are some um, clothing stores in like Old Town Clovis that are vintage, um, partnering with them and, and possibly having a more of a team flair? So we have sort of looked into it, um, not as strongly as we would like, but our mentor, she's been very helpful with showing us the different companies in Fresno who do the unique and vintage clothing. Um, she actually took us to a store called Roots General in mm -hmm. downtown Fresno, and we got to see their products that they do and everything they do. It's all handmade and it's all traditional stuff, different soaps and products like that. So we've actually been talking about working with them because we'd also like to create a label on the clothing as well to help show who we are. Mm -hmm. And they have a screen printing machine there. We were gonna talk to them about partnering with them and making some labels for us to use with our clothing and then seeing what other companies do as well because we've gone to a couple different shops there. Did you also know that um, Cambridge High School, which is in Fresno Unified, has a screen printing company, it's called Cambridge Inks. You could probably speak to them, I'm sure they would give you um, a decent rate on screen printing. Thank you, we'll definitely look into that. I really appreciate all those mm -hmm. comments. Um, so you run into this business online, have you looked into your shipping costs? So with shipping costs, we're going to be including that with the price because we do have lower priced products being that they are used we had to take that into consideration so on average we have a range between four dollars to fifteen dollars and we try and include that with the shipment but it's going to be based kind of off of weight and where exactly we're shipping from and then um some ways that you might be able to advertise is like you are doing your instagram but you can get a lot more followers and follower different groups mm -hmm. but also if you guys posted anything to like YouTube or like any vlogs or like blogs or anything um, for, uh, for the website we were definitely thinking of doing that um, and we were but I'm um, doing to on um, during to due to so oh, sorry due to some stuff we um, we, we oh, sorry we were redoing the website and um, we definitely had that on there but due to us redoing the website um, we took it off and we were going to add it, but we just didn't have enough time. Because that would be a, an expensive way to get advertising. And if you did anything like fashion shows or like how even Fresno Unified will have events for students, fashion show, or even like for uniforms, which I know are not trendy, but <laughs> hey, if you had to wear a uniform, there's a way to make it more trendy, right? Um, so there's some other ways that you guys could get some free press and you could post those things, not only to social media, but like definitely to YouTube. But also, like Fresno Unified even has their site where they're posting all the time. Mm -hmm. That might be pressed both ways, not just for the school district, but also for you guys, you know? Thank you, definitely. Thank you. We appreciate that. Well, that's another thought, is to have uh, to collect clothes at uh, schools. Mm -hmm. And there you got people inclined, you have a bin, that they know it's going to be upcycled, and there's a market that's less interested in getting the tax write off, I would probably. Yeah, there could be a certain payoff for the school that, uh, you know, a pizza party for the class that donates the most clothes. And that would be, you know, a good way to motivate the students to donate more clothes. So let me ask you this. Which one of you is wearing an article that's been upcycled? So right now we're not wearing any of the products that we have upcycled. In fact, um, we don't have any in our sizes. All the sizes we've had have either been too small or too big for us to wear but some of the products we could have brought by for you guys to see. Also more of it right now is just trendier fashion and we try to dress a little more, you know, uh, business professional. So, you know, maybe expanding into that later, but for right now it's just more trendy. We want it to look professional for you guys. 
You might be able to get some more donations like if you were to follow some of the bigger community events that are more like do a lot of events like you see them we used, like they post a lot of times like if they're doing like a big hospital event or valley children or something mm -hmm. you know see if they would be interested in hey it's a cost for kids and while you're still students getting some of the bigger groups that like to do donations to say hey you know we because like they might donate to the clothing closet or dress for success for women, but hey, we would donate to students instead, you yeah. know. So maybe trying to follow or get involved with some of those agencies to see if they would be interested. Because they would do it because it's the right thing to do. Not necessarily, like a lot of times I'll donate, I, and I know I'm not going to get the tax write-off, and I'm okay with that because I would prefer to go to the, someone that's going to benefit from something. So I think a lot of people feel the same way. There's a point where the tax write-off doesn't help you that much. And, and Tim had a good point about um, working with some of the schools to get mm -hmm. donations because if a portion of your audience is living with their parents, you kind of need to get in their face. So you could have flyers uh, maybe, and if I'm a parent and I see your flyer and your clothes are way less than Macy's is trying to sell their military jackets or whatever, um, I might be inclined to look at your site, flyers at school sites. And if you could pick up donations, which I'm not sure if you guys drive yet, that would be a big plus for a lot of people. Because a lot of times you might have something in the closet, like two or three bags waiting. You're just going to drop it off, but you just don't. Mm -hmm. So if you guys actually picked up, that could be a positive. Our friend Logan here drives, so <laughs> okay. yeah, definitely we have a way something we can definitely look into with that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it. Excellent idea.